Hey, what's up all of you beautiful subscribers? Welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. So what we're going to be talking about today are some side jobs that you can do to make some extra, extra money. <laughs> to make some of that sweet cash. So let's just jump right into this here. Um, so one, this one, so I, I heard this at Thanksgiving dinner. I did not know how much money you could make from this. And I didn't know that this was an actual thing. Okay, so hear me out here because you guys are going to be like, what? So a dog walking app. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. I'm not saying you should be a dog walker, but I'm just saying that this is an option. There are apps out there. I'm not affiliated with, with them in any way, shape or form, like Wag and Rover out there. Here's how much you get paid, is that per dog, depending on where you live, you'll make about between 12 and $20 an hour per dog. So if you, have, if you live in an apartment complex, if you live in a city, uh, you know, a lot, an area where there's a lot of people, then this could be a really, I've heard, I mean, the reason why I heard about this, again, at Thanksgiving dinner, you know, a person I, I was talking to uh, said that, you know, they live in an apartment complex and they have one person on one of these apps. They walk about eight to nine dogs, every, well, not every day, but pretty, you know, five, six days a week, they, they walk their dogs. Um, and so when you think about that, like, let's just say it's $20 a dog, eight dogs, that's 160 bucks one hour. Well, maybe a little bit more than an hour because you have to go collect the dogs and uh, you have to go drop them off. So maybe an hour and a half, two hours of work, 160 bucks. So, uh, and a lot of these apps need dog walkers, by the way. It's not completely populated. Some of them do not have enough dog walkers. And so I know that this is a really silly one, but this, I mean, this is a, this is a prime example of a way that you can make some extra cash, even if you only get one or two dogs, even three dogs, even a week and you do it for an hour, three dogs a week, that's still 60 bucks, that's not nothing. If you, especially if you're 14, 15, 16 years old, that's really good money that you can make on the side. So to the Todd dog walking app, um, yeah, what do you guys think of that by the way? This is something that I would probably do if I needed uh, money when I was like 15, 16, I would, I would love to do that. So what do you guys think of that one? Let's move on to the next one. Uh, so this one is, is getting a little bit more saturated, but still plenty of room for growth here. Uh, plenty of room for you to jump in is online tutoring and, uh, and courses. So let's start off with the tutoring. So there's sites like tutor.com. Uh, there's plenty of other ones out there, Course Hero, Chegg. Um, and what you do is if you generally, if, if you've gone to school, gotten good grades, or, or even have a skill that people would like to learn about, um, you know, you can go onto these sites and pretty much teach kids live, um, online. You don't even have to leave your desk. You just have to be there and talk them through everything for, and you make about, from what I could see, about $20 an hour, 15 to $20 an hour, and sometimes more. And so again, this is for 14, 15, 16 year olds. Now this is even better. Now you don't have to go to someone's school or drive to a library or something. Now you can actually do it from your computer. And so this is always, this is especially contingent. You have to be, you have to have a skill. You have to be a good communicator. Um, and you have to actually, you know, like people. And there's a lot of stuff they, but again, this is a decent job, especially for a teenager or a young adult, especially college students too, university students, grad students. Uh, this is a good source of money that doesn't take up a lot of your time. I mean, you, it's 20 bucks an hour, but you have a lot of flexibility in your schedule. You don't have to work every week if you don't want to on these websites. Um, you know, certain students may want to see you every week at the same time, have a meeting with you online at the same time. It's understandable, but you don't have to. That's your choice. Okay, so, and the second one is courses. Um, so courses are, you know, I've made a course, there's a bunch of other courses out there. So if you have a skill, um, I'm going to make one, just upload it to YouTube. I'm not going to make anyone pay for it, but it's, it's going to be about computer programming and, um, it's going to teach everyone how to program, but I learned how to program from a course on Udemy. I learned how to, uh, uh how to code and program Joyce, um, through a course, it was $15. Maybe it was $30. I forget. And so if you have a skill like that, there's a, go to udemy.com. If you think you could do any, like you want to teach a fitness course, you want, if you're in a really good shape, teach a fitness course. If you're a good public speaker, teach a public speaking course. If you're a good programmer, do a programming one. There's, if you're good at hockey, you can do a hockey one, football, whatever. You can teach a course on pretty much anything. And if you upload it to Udemy or your own site uh, or any of the other course sites out there, you know, it depends on the price of your course, but you can be making, you know, 15 to 50 bucks, a hundred bucks. I know some people, especially the ones that made Amazon courses, um, you know, they were charging like 500 bucks a course, a thousand dollars a course. 
And that's, that's good. That's a good side job to have. If you just wanted to make courses, there are people out there, especially there's a bunch on YouTube that just make courses for a living. That's what they do. They learn a skill very quick and they make a course on it right away. And that's a good way to make money. If you want, and especially there's still plenty of room to grow. So whatever you're good at, think about whatever you're good at, what you would want to teach. Think about a course that you would want to teach and just upload. Maybe you're good at art. Maybe you're good at graphic design work. Maybe you're good at whatever, marketing, sales. There's plenty of, uh, it's a good opportunity for you if you wanted to start, even if it's the minimum course length that you have to do is about an hour. So, and the maximum is, is pretty much unlimited. I think it's like 200 hours or something. So um, it's very flexible, but it's a, that's a thing that you could look into. Just upload something to Udemy. Maybe someone buys your course. Uh, maybe someone buy, maybe you turn into one of the top sellers on Udemy and make millions of dollars. Maybe it'll happen. So that's a, that's a key one. Next one is somewhat similar to both of these, but kind of not really. <laughs> Fiverr. So this is part of the gig economy. Um, I used Fiverr years ago. It's even gotten bigger now and they're doing more things with it. But pretty much what the site initially was, uh, you could pay people usually from India, but now from all over the world, you could pay them five bucks and they would do something for you. Uh, so they would post the ads, like one of them, I think I had a logo made by them like five years ago. So I'd be like, the ad was, hey, I will make a logo for you for $5. And then they made a logo and it was okay. I didn't use it, but it was okay. And uh, so, but you can do that for yourself with anything on Fiverr. So you wanna, if you're especially artwork or you, you can make a video or you can do transcription work, you can do, um, shout outs. One guy on Fiverr dresses up as Jesus and charges people like 20 bucks and he will read off a 30 second thing from a script that you write. And all of a sudden you have a clip of Jesus and just people pay for that. And so if you have anything like that, that you can, it, it's kind of like, um, you're doing in the, you know, art world, it's commission work. Uh, so I know a lot of artists on there say, Hey, I will draw your caricature for 50 bucks. Um, so you can go on to Fiverr. If you have any skills that are marketable and you want to do projects for people, Fiverr is a place to go. I know actually one uh, ad I looked on Fiverr, Fiverr recently was someone will set up a full e-commerce website for you for about $130. So if you have a similar skill to that, you can do stuff like that for a hundred dollars. It doesn't have to be five. It could be a hundred, 200, 300, whatever it is. So Fiverr is a good place for that, but I'm still not affiliated with any of this stuff, by the way. Um, and I also don't know if that's how you spell Fiverr. There might be only one V. All right. Number four, number four is, duh, 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 duh. oh yeah, <laughs> this is a big asterisk, a big asterisk here because this is dependent on where you are, but Uber and Lyft. <laughs> Very dependent on your car, very dependent on how much you drive, mileage, where you know traffic. Um, but the gross money you can make from Uber and Lyft is still decent. You can make about twenty. And I think it's an average twenty to twenty-five bucks an hour gross money you make. Sometimes it could be thirty dollars an hour. However, you know, there's costs that come with it. There's gas. There's insurance. Um, well, gas and insurance are the big ones, right? And then there's wear and tear. Um, depends on the kind of, again, it, it depends on the kind of car you have, where are you living? Are you driving in a city where there's lots of stops and starts, or are you driving mainly on a highway on like a suburb somewhere or suburb or a rural road? Not a lot of stops. Uber's not really in, they're not really in rural areas, but you know, kind of on the outskirts of cities, that's different. So I've heard good and bad things. I've talked, I've only been in two Ubers and they were both in LA, both, uh, one of which said it was good living, but still struggling to get by. The second person was like, I'm not making any money here. Uh, you know, I, at the end of every day, I'll take home 30, $40. And you know, it'd be good if it was a part-time gig and a better car. But for a lot of people, you don't have the nice high mileage car for a lot of people out there. You know, they just kind of, they have an old beat up, you know, 2008, whatever. And, um, it burns up a lot of gas. Maybe if you have an electric car or a hybrid, this could be a good option for you. But odds are, if you have an electric car, you probably have enough money where you don't want to do a side job like this. So that's kind of, this is up to you. I've heard good and bad things about Uber. I've also heard about people again with those high mileage cars that make over a hundred grand. So it really depends on where you live and, um, where your car is. So that's a big asterisk here, but again, it's still, why I'm mentioning all these jobs is because they're super easy to get into and to join. 
It doesn't take more than a day or two for a lot to join a lot of this. I mean, maybe the online course would take a while to prep, but for the most part, you can hop on any of these within a couple of days and start making money. Uh, the next one, the next one is TaskRabbit. This is similar to Fiverr, uh, but it's if you're a handyman or a woman. So TaskRabbit is kind of what it sounds like is it's similar to Fiverr. It's like, hey, I will do this for you for this much money. And um, yeah, and then you go do it. Except the difference is that this is labor. So there's stuff like moving and packing, heavy lifting, home improvement, furniture assembly, grocery shopping, yard work. Um, so there's tons of stuff you could do here. Like, yeah, like home, like knocking down walls, renovation sometimes. There's sometimes contractors will go on there. But um, from what I've heard from this, you this is actually a good one because you get paid a fair amount of ch fair amount of change for for this one specifically because you're doing something that people really don't like to do, which is moving a lot of big stuff for the most part, or doing stuff that people really don't like to do. And so I know a lot of people that make you know hundred hundred and ten dollars a project. Some people make fifty dollars a project. Some make a thousand dollars a project. From what I found, depending on how much you do and what your tasks are, if you were to do this. As you know, I maybe you do it 10, 20 hours a week, maybe even full time, maybe you do 40, 50, 60 hours a week. This could be your main business. Uh, you can make anywhere from, you know, obviously, you know, if you only do want to do one thing a week, you're only going to make a hundred bucks. But from the people that take it seriously as a side business or a main business, you make between $1,000 and $7,000 a month, depending on your tasks. So again, if you're a handy woman, handy man, um, this is a task grab is a good place to go. Uh, a couple more I got here. I want to talk about flipping. Good old Gary V. Flipping. This is, it's been around, this is the old, one of the oldest things that you can do still. It's just, it's what it sounds like. You go to garage sales, Gary V has been doing this. And I know people that don't make a full time living from this, but it's a good side job. Whenever you see a garage sale or something at, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, a liquidation store, not, I'm trying to think of the different word for that, but there's one nearby here and it's giant. It's not a liquidation store, but it's a place that kind of sells refurbished products or, you know, underpriced products or return products. Um, flipping can be really good. So it can be very lucrative. And especially if you go in, for example, there's a bunch of stuff on Craigslist or the Canadian version is Kijiji where people will post pretty much stuff for free, like an old beat up table and it's for free. But the deal is you have to go in, pick it up and, and uh, move it out yourself. And people will give it away for free because they don't want to pay moving people 10, 20, $30 to come and pick it up and move it. So they'll just do it for free. And so what you can do is you can go pick it up. And if it's really damaged and stuff, maybe fix it up a little and sell it. Just sell it back on Craigslist or Kijiji and sell it for $50, sell it for $100. It looks nice now, you cleaned it. It's all cleaned out and it's all structurally, you put in new nails and um, it's for that, you can do it for that, you can do it for collectibles, anything. Flipping is a thing that you can do. And if you wanna do it on Joysk and sell your products on Joysk, uh, we take the lowest fee out of all the websites. So uh, if you wanna flip on Joysk, you are more than welcome to. We've had so many sellers uh, join up recently and um, not everyone's posted stuff, but I'd like to thank anyone that's actually signed up and it means a lot to me. And I redid the seller portal. Hopefully it's a little bit better. Um, some of you have posted, especially t-shirts. A lot of you have posted t-shirts, but um, yeah. So anyways, I'll get back on track here, but yeah, thank you, any of the sellers for signing up for Joyce. It means a lot to me. We're gonna be going full board very soon and you're gonna, uh, you're gonna see a lot of traffic coming to your products that you're selling very, very soon. I'm so close to finishing the site. Um, to having the key updates done so I can start marketing it a lot more. Okay, but anyways, back, to, yeah, so flipping, that's a good one. Let's get back to uh, two more I wanna mention. Seven is flipping. All right, it's flipping. <laughs> I already said flipping. Let's go freelance, that's what I meant. Number seven is flipping, no, it's freelance uh, photo. Freelance photography and video. This is still a thing and there's a bunch of sites. The reason why I mentioned this because there's more, there's new sites popping up with this kind of stuff all the time. I just ran into, there's one recently I bought a, I bought a royalty free picture from that someone just drew or took a photo of. Um, vec, vector stock or something like that. There's Shutterstock. There's a bunch of, bunch of other of those photo video websites. But what this means is you just, it's what it sounds like. You go take some pictures. If you have a camera or even your phone now, it takes good enough pictures 
where you can go around, take a picture of a park bench and just maybe put a filter on it or something, upload it to the site. If it gets downloaded, if someone pays for it, you get, you know, whatever, five, 10, 15 bucks. Um, and if someone just downloads it and they're subscribed to the website, you get, you know, a buck or something, 50 cents. But uh, that can be lucrative too. Again, I, uh, this is something that photographers, for whatever reason, do not want to do, but it's a really good source of especially passive income inside money. Because a lot of photographers, they want to be valued and, and you know, they want to, uh, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to do a photography accent, but I can't. Um, they want to take photos and have their stuff be taken seriously, and they want to get paid for a gig, and not just give away their stuff so someone else could use it for, in, for commercials and stuff, even though that's what half of what they do anyways. Um, so there's still lots of room for this. Freelance, just go outside. Take a bunch of pictures of park benches and sidewalks and the clouds and whatever, and just upload it, and just maybe one will sell, maybe one won't. Um, maybe a bunch sell, maybe a bunch won't. Take some videos too. Upload it to Video Blocks. That's another website. So this is real. This if you have a phone, there's really no excuse for this one. It's like, oh, but that's so difficult. No, this thing shoots in like what is this thing shooting like 4K or something now? It shoots almost as good as my camera, um, as the camera that I'm filming with right now. And yeah, like 60 frames per second. You can take videos and good pictures. Like it's it's a good way to try to make money is uh, try to do fr um, some freelance photography um, and just upload that stuff to websites. You can also just go and do the wedding gigs. You can do the corporate gigs too. If you actually have a professional camera and go and go and do them. And that could work out as well too. It's just, uh, it's a little bit more work and tougher to get those gigs. Last one that I have to mention is because this was what I did. Um, I was in real estate and a lot of people do it as a side gig. I do recommend you doing it as a full-time gig if you were to get into it, but I know plenty of people, it's their side job. And um, if you are a community person or if you are uh, looking to get into uh, a, a kind of a real estate game, you wanna get into a sales game, you want to uh, maybe invest in real estate in the future, you want to get to know some people, build up a community and network of wealthy individuals, real estates, being a real estate agent can be really good especially long-term. The first few years, it sucks for the most part, unless you're really good. Um, but being a real estate agent, I mean, if you make one sale, um, if you were to make one sale on a $500,000 home, I don't know what the commissions are these days. I haven't, it's been a few years since I was in real estate, but you know, let's just round it up to a million dollars. It would be tough for you to sell a million dollar home, but if you were to get a million dollar home and sell it for someone, and you were to take a 2% commission, that's 20 grand. That's $20,000. So if you do one, one sale, or even a, if you're a buyer agent, sometimes you can get that too, or a lease agent. Um, again, that's a lot of money. What I know a lot of people what used to do, and what I kind of used to do, was I was a lease agent. I was doing it half full time though. And um, I, my job was to pretty much go out and try to lease out rental properties. And I was very successful at that. I was pretty good. I was really one of the only people to use the internet to try and market properties at the time. And um, so again, like, and usually, if you guys don't know the stats, uh, depending on where you are and how competitive it is, you usually take a one, one or two months of the total lease you take as commission. Depends on where you are. Some people can only get half a month if it's super competitive and they're new. Some people get two months when they're established. Rarely people get more than two months. So if the rent for on a monthly basis for a place that you're leasing out is like $2,000, all right, maybe it's a, it's a townhouse, maybe it's a commercial space, which is what I used to do. If it's $2,000 a month and you were able to lease it out and you get two months rent, you get $4,000 for leasing out one place. So it can be very lucrative if you're really good at it. Um, Cause again, if you lease out one place a month, then that's, you know, 45, 50 grand a year job. It can be, depends on what you do. So anyways, those are some side jobs. Uh, I know that there's so many out there that I just could not get to, but these were ones that, I mean, we will see if the real estate bubble pops or not, but these are ones that um, I, I, I think could be good in the coming year, depending on where you are. But for now, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out joysk.com, my e-commerce marketplace. It means a lot to me when you guys check it out. Check it out. Uh, you're all very beautiful people. Remember to hit the subscribe and like button, and I will see you guys in the next video.